One job, two identical resumes. One called Mohammed, one called Martin. So who gets hired? We'll examine claims of prejudice in the jobs market and ask how to level the playing field. I'm Martin Stamford. This is Inside. Welcome to Insight. What's in a name? Well, depending what it is and where you live, it could be the difference between getting your dream job or a rejection letter. Studies in a number of Western countries have found evidence that whether your name sounds more white than black or more Christian than Muslim, it could affect your chances of getting your foot in the door. Insight's Yasmin Khatundiwan reports. <laughs> Landing your dream job is very rarely the easiest of tasks. But research into the employment sector has revealed astonishing variation and discrimination on the basis of your name. If you've got a white Christian sounding name like Matt Smith, you're at the least more than twice as likely to get a job callback than if you've got an ethnic sounding one. A lot of evidence across different aspects of employment has shown that there's clear barriers that ethnic minority communities face when it comes to labour market participation or employment. And this starts across um, all levels of employment, so starting off with recruitment, onto progression, onto senior management, onto pay gaps. There's a number of factors that work together to cause workplace discrimination. A core aspect of it is unconscious bias and um, kind of negative stereotypes about ethnic minority communities that influence how employers view prospective applicants. This isn't just a phenomenon in the UK. Studies from the US and other European countries such as France have presented similar findings. In 2015, former British Prime Minister David Cameron announced it was time to end discrimination and finish the fight for real equality, asking numerous organisations to join a pledge for name-bound recruitment, where recruiters actively remove applicants' names from their CVs during the application process. Deloitte, Virgin Money and KPMG were among the organisations set to participate. Fast forward to 2017, the report commissioned by the then Prime Minister came out to little fanfare, with few organisations taking the leap to implement the given suggestions. The reason that we haven't so much focused around name-blind recruitment is we think it runs much deeper than that because at some point through name-blind recruitment you meet the individual. So unless you are addressing um, unconscious and conscious bias throughout your entire process and throughout your organisation, it's a name-catching and an eye-catching thing to do, but it doesn't necessarily lead to the systemic changes that you need as an organisation. Martin, do you think things are getting better? I still think there is a way to go. Uh, if I think in this country the number of black people who sit on boards, the number of women who sit on boards, are we where we need to be? No, I don't think we are. KPMG have introduced initiatives for students from varied backgrounds with an aim to diversify their workforce. We bring uh, students in in large groups to assess them and I can't tell you how much diversity and difference there was in the room and in fact going around and talking to some of the students they themselves observed how, what an eclectic mix of people there were. One of the reasons we were doing it the way that we are is in some respects to try and remove some of the biases and just get to what their skills and capabilities are. So we get them to do exercises, we get them to work as teams, and in that sense we're removing, if you like, the sense of not where they come from, but precisely what can they do. But with astounding facts presenting the job market as unequal, how exactly do the people who are about to launch themselves into this sector feel about these findings? I'm here at Goldsmiths University of London to find out. My name is Mahada Hassan, I attend Goldsmiths University of London and I study anthropology and visual practice. Hi, my name is Abigail Joseph and I'm a first year sociology student at Goldsmiths. My name is Sharif Yuma. I am currently studying at Goldsmiths University of London. I am studying sociology with criminology. I'm David Cartwright, a freelance journalist in my final few weeks at Goldsmiths University. My name is Payden Vaughan and I'm a freelance journalist and student at Goldsmiths University. My name is Billy Monia Stokes. I'm a third year student at Goldsmiths. Okay ladies, 
So we've heard lots of reports and research indicating that your names will have an impact on your success in the job market. How does that make you feel? Um, I think it's discrimination at its finest and I don't think it's right, especially within like the world that we live in today. I'm just trying to make it. I shouldn't not be able to get a job because of my name or my background or whatever ethnicity I am. I'm reminded of when I was at school, one of my um, teachers, a black female teacher actually, who was from Nigeria, said to me, oh, you're lucky you've got like a, a good name. And I thought, what does a good name actually mean? You know, obviously not being typically ethnic, but a name is a name. I didn't choose my name. I shouldn't be judged for something that's out of my control, like anything else. So I don't appreciate it at all. I don't imagine that I'll have any problems, but really I think it's a bigger issue. We tend to get bogged down in the smaller things where really we should look at how people have been framed, what the news is reporting on people and why people have these opinions on certain names compared to others. People should be judged on their merit and not on superficial stuff like someone's name, which to be fair, you can't really help what your name is, essentially, like, I didn't choose my name, my parents did, so I, I, I don't think anyone should be, um, should be ostracised because of that. I guess it depends on uh, what reason it is that people aren't hiring people because of their name. If it's something to do with having a foreign name, for instance, that's really bad, and I do know that that happens, which is just wrong. Name blind recruitment isn't a cure, but initiatives like it raise the profile of the issue and force employers to take action, raising awareness of discrimination to pitfalls. So employers can focus on the merits of your CV and your suitability to the given role, leaving aside your name, creed and colour without them being forcibly hidden. Yasmin Hatoun Diwan, reporting for Insight. Well, to discuss that further, I'm joined now by Naveen Malik, who's a human rights lawyer with an interest in religious discrimination in the workplace. And also with us today, Ugo Arinze, who is the founder of Onyx Property Consultants, a London-based property firm who is passionate about social issues. And we'll join the discussion in a moment. Um, Nabila Malik, how do we ensure that employers are name-blind? Well, the, the idea of name-blind recruitment is just that um, CVs are sent without um, their names to those who are selecting um, for the purposes of the particular job. Um, so that's how you'd ensure it. However, it's not, um, that's not where it ends because, of course, a study in France found that name-blind itself wasn't enough because what people were doing, what employers were doing, were they were looking for other factors that would indicate the ethnicity of the individual like? applicant, like um, the language that they spoke. Um, Arabic was a very big clue um, to a lot of employers, and um, what happened was, um, as a result, despite the fact that there was name-blind recruitment in place, um, you still had the same problem. So it's not a perfect solution? Not a perfect solution. Um, Ugo, as you built up your business, have you been name-blind to who you've worked with? Um, well, I think m more in the context of this conversation is my experience growing up in the States. And so I grew up with the name Ugo Orenze, and inevitably you'd be in the classroom situation and your teacher gets to your name and they kind of stumble and you know it's something that they're, they're challenged with. And then going up through corporate America. So I have faced it in terms of people struggling with the name and then it leads to the conversation. But it's one of those things that for me personally it's evolved from yeah probably as a kid i didn't like having a name that was different and and having one that was you know mercilessly teased yeah but certainly did you want to be called something else did um, you ask i mean my, my middle name is vivian so i could have gone by that and ironically my parents go by their christian names or their english names and um and we didn't our four siblings me and my four, my three siblings were given our traditional names mm. um but you know as i've grown up and so perhaps there have been opportunities Opportunities that I've lost because of my name or going through an MBA program and, and interviewing with uh, investment banks perhaps that discriminated the opportunities I might have gotten but uh, I feel like I have progressed in my career and had a successful career in corporate banking. Uh, the other side of that would be it's distinctive. Mm. It does make you stand out Absolutely. and that could be a positive thing. And that's how I embrace it today and I see it as something that actually beyond the conversation is if we started recognizing actually diversity as an additive in the workplace, then it's actually names distinguish perhaps and give us a sense of we want a pool that's multicultural because it brings different ideas, it brings different perspectives. And I think if 
organizations started recognizing the value of that and not being so homogeneous in thought and look indeed, um, because we run into that from uh, gender bias as well, right? Because Nabila, the paperwork and actually receiving an application either on a screen or on through a paper application is one thing. I suppose most jobs then you get um, invited to an interview panel of some touch. Yes. And then all sorts of other factors come in. Exactly. You may not know the name of this candidate. They may be called candidate 27 or something. But then their visual appearance, their age, their stature, et cetera, et cetera, yes. comes into play. Well, th that's interesting because just going back to... Um, what was said earlier that what difference that a name makes now you'll be you might know of a story that was reported in the bbc in 2012 where jo jordan berkeley um was somebody who was asked to change her name by her career advisor because she was told it improve her chances and she was asked if she'd adopted if she could adopt the name of elizabeth she did adopt the name of elizabeth and she found that it did make a difference. She got the interviews that she'd wanted and was refused. Then there was an Arab, um, half Arab, half um, uh, Bangladeshi girl who uh, was, in, uh, was experiencing the same difficulties. And uh, she changed her name in eventually by Depol uh, and found uh, exactly the same thing happened. Um, despite the fact that she was of an ethnic group, it still improved her chances because she got her foot through the door got in front of the interview panel, was able to uh, convince the interview panel to take her. However, just going back to your question, um, what happens uh, uh, further along uh, the, the line? Because, of course, even if you have name-blind recruitment, discrimination often occurs at interview stages. What do you do then? There have been suggestions. Well, you could have ne you could have um, blind interviews. You could have uh, voice uh, equipment oh. that is changed. And going that surely this is we're going to the ridiculous. You are, oh. Yes, that is exactly the point. But what but about the change in the name? You know, the boy's name Mohammed, for instance, is one of the most popular names here in the United Kingdom. It comes out in the lists each year. Are you suggesting that people should consider changing a name like that because of potential prejudice against Muslims? Yeah, I mean, I guess the statistics would back that you might consider that, but I think that's a personal decision where do you embrace the name you've been given and, and what it, the potential opportunities for it, or do, you, do, do the discriminatory practices, do you think that the future holds outweigh that? And sure. I think that's an individual decision, and just as I said in my case, I could have easily switched to a more English name but chose not to. But you would understand if people decided to make the change? I would understand that, and I, I think this is not a new phenomenon. I understand that back in Hollywood in the 1930s and 40s, Jews changed their names because it was more acceptable and easier to get opportunities in acting um, jobs because they had a name that was more anglicized. So again, people can make their own decisions and perhaps look into the future and say that for the practice or the industry they're trying to embrace, this is going to make life easier. But that's very interesting because it is about sometimes the industry that the individual is going into. Um, for instance, in medicine, um, ethnic minorities, particularly from the Pakistani community, are a proportionately represented. Mm. Um, however, in other areas like marketing, advertising, um, there is high, uh, high uh, chances of getting uh, refused uh, even an interview. And uh, coming back to whether changing a name like Mohammed to a more anglicised uh, name makes a difference. Well, we know with jo Jordan Berkeley, using the name Elizabeth did. Yeah. I have, I know somebody who's changed his name from Mohammed to uh, a Latin uh, American um, pop star, Ricky Martins. <laughs> and it, it's, it's actually, he's changed it by default, but it's helped him. It's, it's helped right. him in the... Artists okay. change their get, names all the time. ...to get the so. job that he wants. Well, we're going to continue our conversation, but on the wider basis in just a moment, when Insight continues, positive discrimination. Is that the answer to inequality?